Yes, Lord, we worship you. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for yet another opportunity to fellowship with you this morning. We thank you for a good night's sleep, a peaceful night's sleep, a restful night's sleep, a cool night's sleep. Thank you indeed for who you are in our lives. You are a loving Father, a caring Father, a merciful Father, a favorable Father. A helpful Father. We appreciate you, Lord, for how well you are managing our lives. All the works of your hands testify to your goodness. All the works of your hands testify to your mercifulness. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for the savings of our souls. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us all the time. Thanks, O oh Lord, for provision, for protection, for guidance. Thank you, Daddy, for healings. Thank you, Lord, for the air that we breathe, for the waters. Thank you for the firmament. Thank you for the sunlight. Thank you for the stars. Thank you, Lord, for the moon. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for the complexities of human nature that you still yet curtail and manage, not to his destruction. We thank you, Lord, because you're always there for us. You are the God that answers our prayers. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. It is marvelous how you relate with all the works of your hands and takes good care of everything, even the ants and every living and non-living things. We are grateful to you for being there. We thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Daddy, for our dear country, Nigeria, because you are the one holding it together. Definitely, your hands are there. If not, this nation would have been blown up. But for your love, accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for every family here present on planet Earth. Thank you, Lord, even for all the adversaries, because we know you will take good care of them. Thank you, Lord, because evil can never triumph over good. Accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God of heaven and earth, we have come again before the throne of mercy this morning. Please, Daddy, we ask for forgiveness of all our iniquities as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Please forgive us in Jesus' name. We also pray, Almighty Father, those that we have offended, Please grant them the mercy to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, today we want to learn from you. Please come and speak with us. Guide us, counsel us, instruct us, rebook us where necessary. Lord God Almighty, let your loving kindness continue with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Good morning, brethren. Welcome you to today's family devotional. 
Um, God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, we're going to take a Bible passage from <clears throat> the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter 3, from verse 1, uh, from verse 7 to, let's take it to the end, from verse 7. We stopped at verse 6 yesterday, and we're still continuing today. Amen. God bless you. And then uh, today, we are going to talk about the ministry of hope. The ministry of hope. Please go ahead, ma. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look st steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excel. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face, face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. Mm -hmm. But even to this day, when Moses is, is, read, is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord is the Spirit, mm -hmm. and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, we unveil face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give glory to God for yet another day. The ministry of hope is the topic this morning. Yesterday, we talked about the, uh, we are ministers of the new covenant. I tried as much as possible to make the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. And today you could see, look, brethren, let's put sentiments apart. Let us focus on God. It, it is God that we should focus upon so that we don't get distracted. That is why even the Bible says, look not unto your uh, leaders. Praise the Lord. So as I did say, let's look unto Christ. If we look, if we focus on Christ, the thing we are trying to do is this. All of us are trying to understand the mind of God towards us. The mind of God towards us. We want to know who God is. The mind of God towards us is good. God himself towards us is a loving God, is a caring God. God is not a hunter. Amen. I can say confidently that God is not a hunter that is looking at whom he will kill. No, that responsibility, that duty belongs to Satan. John 10, 10, part A, that says, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Satan is a hunter. Okay. <laughs> God is a life giver. Satan destroys. God rebuilds. God recovers. God, you know, suppresses the works of Satan. So, 
let us look at the ministry of hope. The ministry of the old covenant. I said it's a, it's, it's a tit for tat era. Law does not help anybody. The law condemns. The law kills. The law destroys. You remember when they were going to apply the law upon the woman, the adulterer, the adulterous woman, when they came before Christ. And look, brethren, Christ himself demonstrates, demonstrated all these things to us. Clearly, in practical terms. People came to kill. Christ said, don't kill. People say, you have breached the law. You must be killed. The law brought death. The summary of the whole 613 laws. They brought punishment. They brought death. They brought agony. They don't give room. They don't give... Some people will say, like some ministers will say, God is a God of second chance. God is even more than God of second chance. He's God of several chances. Because the Lord does not condemn the sinner. He condemns the sin in him. So long as a person is still in sin, he's separated from God. But one thing that God looks at always is how do I bring him or her to myself, back to myself. God is hopeful that we are going to change for the better. And he keeps on directing and leading and guiding and, you know, appearing to us mercifully. Now, let's look at, tell me, we, we, you will say I talk about tight, tight, tight. Tell me, for instance, what that brought to the church of God. Tell me again, what excessive, I'm not saying don't ask for money in the church, but there in everything you can do it in excess. What is the excess of, the, of uh, taking alcohol? It is being drunk. Even the Bible makes it clear, alcohol in itself is not even the issue. It is the level, the volume that you take that destroys you. Apart from wanting to be a pastor, a minister of God, and so on, and that should, in fact, that the best thing is to refrain from taking alcohol. If you can refrain from alcohol, you will overcome the temptation of being, of getting drunk. Amen. So, now, for the, if you look at what we are, the ministrations we are getting in our churches today, they, they, they are divided into, let me, two broad, or can we say three broad categories, all right? The ministry of condemnation, which is centered upon the use of the Old Testament laws upon the people, which the Lord himself has erased. I keep saying it. Until this veil is removed from our eyes, we will still be in the church of God and still be in bondage. Did you not hear from the passage that was read to us that the ministry of hope is the ministry that calls us to liberty, freedom. Freedom. Freedom from all sorts of, even freedom from sin itself. Because when the law of God is written, the spirit you know, of God is in your heart, you cannot afford to do evil. You can't afford to kill anybody. You can't afford to commit adultery, you can't afford to steal, you can't afford to envy, you can't afford to uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to be bottled up with unforgiveness in your heart. You can't afford to see what is good and remove your eyes. You can't afford you see, when, one of the problems we have today is that when we see people, even in the church of God, doing what is not correct, we will say, let us Keep quiet because we don't want to judge them. The plague of silence. The plague of silence. Even I remember when I started this ministry. It's like, ah, uh ah, -uh, why is it that you are focusing on these people? Why? why? Why not just preach your own and go? If we continue to tolerate and to continue to allow falsehood, 
to be preached and taught without, you know, coming back with the truth to counter them. For instance, when you were told that if you don't pay your tithes, you won't make heavy, how do you feel? You feel terribly guilty. You feel bad. And the truth is that many a times you have challenges that even made it impossible for you to, even if you wished to. And look at it, too. if you miss your tithe, you are supposed to pay interest on it whenever you are paying it. Too. Another terrible thing that put, if it was easy for you at the beginning, why didn't you pay? Now you want to pay, you are paying interest on it. That is the nature of the law, because it was law. And law kills, law destroys, law makes people guilty. Don't you hear? It is the law, the law thing is a ministry of death. But the ministry of the spirit is a ministry of hope. It's a ministry that says, yes, even though you went wrong, go to your God. He forgives you as he forgot, forgave the adulterous woman. And you are free. And that woman was as good, even though she had had five husbands, she was as good as being a virgin after Christ has forgiven. That's why I laugh at some of us. What we do in churches today, we want to legally find out everything about the person. You know, and at the end of the day, we that are finding out these things, we ourselves, we are saved by grace, not as if we merited what we are trying to impose on other people. Not as if we qualify to be, but now we lay ourselves, we lay before ourselves, before other people, the laws that we ourselves did not fulfill. I want to tell you something about marriage. Marriage, the traditional marriage and the registry are the legal, legal marriage. The ones you are doing in church is good. It's good because, for instance, if, for instance, you are from a Christian family, you ought to. In fact, you should desire it. It's good. But the one that is the real marriage is your traditional marriage as well as your registry marriage because the registry becomes important in the sense that in the eyes of the law of the land or the, the environment in which you operate they want to know whether you are legally married but the one that supersedes all of them is the one that is uh, um that is the traditional yoma Amen. So, as I said, the old laws destroyed and God has set it aside. Christ, by sending Christ. Because I'm, I'm emphasizing and re-emphasizing these things because today we are confused because we are mixing the old laws with the new dispensation. And it just won't work. You can't put old wine in the in, in a new wine skin or something. You can't mix the two together. It becomes a problem. That's why the, we are in trouble with the work, word of God. Two things are happening. It's either we understand, and because we are benefiting, because why did we single out tithes and first fruit and leave the other six hundred and eleven laws? unfulfilled. You, you ought not to shave your beard as a man. You ought not to shave your beard as a man. So, all these things, we need to be careful. That is why, you see, there is, like it was described, when Moses was bringing the, the Ten Commandments from the mountain, what happened? He, he, he had to Veil. He has to cover his face because the radiance, you know, of the glory, and that's what was read to us today. That the glory that was even the ministry that led to death. That ministry itself was still glorious then. But how about the one that is the ministry of the spirit, that which that this one is more glorious. This one gives us hope. That one gives us hopelessness. 
This one gives us hope. And Christianity is all about faith, and faith is about hope. It is an evidence of things hoped for. The substance of things not seen. Faith. Hope. That's why we, the ministry we have now is a ministry of hope. Not a ministry that will say somebody has committed one sin and then is condemned. Uh, uh, God is ready to save that person if he will surrender and submit himself to God's direction. No matter, did the Bible not say, no matter, even though your sin is as red as the scarlet, Christ is ready to make you as white as the snow. That was the day that woman would have died. Do we learn anything from all this? And then, do we still... <clears throat> Brethren, open your heart. Put your GOs aside. Put me aside. Open your heart to what Christ did. Christ forgave the adulterous woman who was by that law. And that law was still in existence. He was, she was supposed to be stoned to death by law that kills, they would have killed her and they would have destroyed her, they would have terminated her life. But by the spirit, the ministry of hope that Christ brought, which he started implementing even before his own death, he has started forgiving the sins. Do you not remember the man who was brought before Christ on a Sunday and so I said, uh, Rise and walk or something. And if we are not saying, now look at the sin. That the law, the law is that you don't do anything on Sunday. And in now, they now include it to include healing. That you can't even heal on a Sabbath day. They now started argument, arguing within themselves. That look, how can he say? Then Christ asked them, which one is better? To say, rise up and walk or your sins are forgiven, or whatever. Or, you know, your laws. That says, who amongst you will put your children, your... Very sorry for that interruption. I'm being distracted here and there. Now, like I said, when you look at the law, everybody is condemned, including me and you. But when you look at the ministry of hope, there is hope for us. If we did anything wrong, we go to our God, we ask for forgiveness, and we, life moves on. Nobody will make heaven by observing the laws. Nobody. Because it says, your righteousness is like a filthy rag before me. And it says, for all have sinned, and I have come short of the glory of God. That's judgment. The law brought about death, hopelessness. No remedy. But Christ came to redeem us. Our Redeemer. Christ is our Redeemer. He came to save us. For God so loved the world. I mean, that He gave His only begotten Son. You see, they, let me also put it simply. The law, the, the law, the legal period is a period of hatred. The grace period is the period of love, mercy, goodness, hope. To every situation, to every terrible situation, there is a solution in the New Testament, in the New uh, Covenant, in the New Ministry. But in the Old, a man is condemned and is condemned and no more remedy for him. Thank God Almighty for this message. May the veils that covered our eyes and hearts, may they be removed so that we stop subjecting ourselves to the bondage that the Lord himself has removed by virtue of Hebrews 7, 14 to the end. And may we stop subjecting ourselves to tithing and offering to or, or going to um, uh, Shiloh hours to, to go to uh, temples that the Lord does not dwell in, to go to um, 
uh, I mean, go and be bathing in the river and to go there all, the, you know, putting salt in water in the church of God to bathe so that, you know, and then may God deliver us from the, completely from the era of lies. And may God redirect our hearts and minds, our thoughts and everything towards him so that our lives will be full of hope. Don't you know that the kingdom of God is even received by hope? You hope. Have faith and hope that you get there and God will make it to happen to us in the mighty name of Jesus. No man works, you know, gets, saves himself by his works. Our works don't save us. That's where the Lord has confounded us. If you say you are righteous by your own uh, right doing or righteous, righteous doing, that you judge by yourself. God says it's like a field of rice. That's why grace is something uh, dangerous for people that don't understand the word of God. They don't even understand this grace or merited favor. You don't labor for it. God himself just consider you good, even though you are bad. We are bad. He considers us good, even though we are bad. So when, how long will this veil, will we continue to allow people to, to, to cover our face or on our hearts of understanding? I told you the other time, one of the weapons used by the people is to tell you everything in the Bible we believe. Yes, we believe. But the Bible says in that Hebrew 7 that this aspect of the Bible has been erased, has been, should not be practiced. And then we are take, we now say, we are still going to that same place to pick one or two of those ones because they bring in money. I have told you who are full-time ministers, uh, pastors. I have told you everybody is a full-time minister because you are supposed to click, you know, link with your God 24-7. But if you must venture to say you work full-time in the church, you must have other sources of Income. It's even getting clearer. Now you are seeing what we have been saying a long time, a long time ago. You see, God calls you to worship Him. If He calls you to worship, He doesn't sack you. You remain with Him because His calling is unconditional. His love is unconditional. But if a man calls you to come and serve God, He will sack you when you don't meet His terms. And you will not be guilty because you are his employee. You are not God's uh, employee. Are you not the messenger of he that pays you? He who pays the piper, uh, uh, plays the tuna, whatever, how do they put it? So you need to, you know, let this thing work. Our head, let it work. We should stop deceiving ourselves. Even if we are being deceived, we should be able to. And the, the our... Our calamity is that we lack knowledge of God. God is telling us A. We are saying Z. We didn't even want to know what God says first. Then we want one rabbi somewhere. We now worship man. We respect man. We honor man by their age and status, but not to worship man. We are worshiping man. We are worshiping our Jews. We are worshiping our priests, we are worshipping our prophets. It's against God. God does not share his glory with anybody. That your pastor, that your geo, including me, can make mistakes. We can make errors. It is for you to use the word of God to search out the truth. And once you know the truth, you know, hold on to the truth, preach and teach the truth so that others may know the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So ours is the ministry of hope. If anybody goes astray, ours is to tell, sorry you've gone astray, but come back unto the Lord. The Lord is ready to give, forgive you and to receive you back unto him. Not to say you are condemned. We can't do this for you because, because you didn't pay your tithe, we can't ordain you. Because you didn't pay your tithe, we can't even conduct you know, you look at tightening envelopes before you ordain somebody. Amen. Part of requirements, evil requirements. 
law that killed. You didn't attend all programs, therefore, you, you don't qualify for this and that. All programs, even though those all programs are meaningless, they will destroy even your life. You don't have any ministry that does not allow you to plan your life is a dangerous ministry, is, is a legalistic ministry. Any ministry that does not give you the freedom that the Lord has given to you. It's a dangerous one. It's not a ministry of hope. And unfortunately, that's where many of these our large gatherings fall into. They are not ministry. And then the second aspect of the ministry that I was talking about, sorry, I even almost forgot that, is that most of our ministries are prosperity ministries. Secondary thing is what we put as priority one. When you are seeking miracles, you purposely go just to seek miracles. You don't go to church unless you have a pony issue, a pony issue. And you now are serving God because you have that. Then when you get that, you, you go back now. No sincerity. That is why I want to tell you the heart, the heartbeat of motivational speaking is in the Bible. Every principle that is, you know, enunciated in the passages of the Bible, they are things that the motivate motivational speakers use. So you can get motivational things out of the Bible. And that is what most of these, our GOs do. They now begin to tell you about prosperity, tell you more about prosperity, about all these things, than the kingdom of God, which is the most paramount. And if you follow God, you will do the will of God. You can't be lazy. Nobody will teach you to work hard before you make money. Nobody will teach you to be honest. Nobody. Will. The Holy Spirit itself will teach you. So that is why you will see, go and check the titles of the message. You can get to America overnight. You can get to London overnight. Even, then all your enemies must die. And then the, and then open a delay. <laughs> that one that they cling upon. Oh, you delay only a local to individual only a local to. And one of the greatest open that we have, war that we have in our family, is a war against poverty. And you camp the people in the camp. They know that they can't think outside the box. And when are they going to overcome that? When you keep them in, 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 in the programs from Monday to Sunday. And even the little job they have in their hands, you interrupt them with programs. And then when they start sacking them or you know, telling them uh, to, that they are not useful, you say the person who is doing it, their supervisors or leaders are evil. It's not true. You created it. You don't give, you don't bring hope to people. So let us retrace our steps. Even if the leaders are misleading us, brethren, why don't you stop misleading yourself? The greatest sin a man can commit is if they are things against themselves. You are lazy. You want to become somebody in your substance. Did the Bible not tell you that a lazy man will turn to poverty? So let us, you see, this thing is now personal. Think yourself. I thank God for my life. From the beginning of my life, I've been a, a messenger of uh, social change. Um, I am agent of change for the better, not for evil. You can't tell me not, I was, I told you when I was in CSB, I was reading Chino Achebe for my wife, and my pastor says I had her back sleeping. Now, today, I thank God I read Chino Achebe because it helped me to be able to be academically sound, to be able to, I mean, if I had dropped it then and take to that dangerous doctrine, I would have been an illiterate. And I would have been among those to continuously be deceived as the so-called geos are doing today. You won't have a, a mind of yourself. That is the beauty of education. Just to expose, you can analyze, you can think around issues, and then you can now, you know, know that no matter how much your analysis is, you can't understand everything. You still have to depend upon God to give you wisdom in whatever you are doing. If you want to make progress, I was counseling a young boy yesterday. I said, look, you can do anything to support your education, but let it be that you support your education, but never drop your education. 
if you do, you will regret it. And it's a statement of fact. It's a prophetic statement. It's also a statement of fact. Because how will you interact with people who are higher than you? To God be the glory today, I say I have related with the, with the, with, with, the uh, with the rich, with the poor. I have related with all strata, all manner of people, and I can easily adapt to wherever I find myself. But if it is just at this lower level alone, I can relate. With this, my hands, I shook uh, late Alex Equeno, the vice president of this nation. With this, my hands. If I was not, if I was, uh, uh, I didn't improve myself, how will I get to the arena where that shaking of hands? Maybe that is what is important to you. You are the attached attach to the minister. Under the attach to the, with this, my hands, I shook. Late President, uh, Vice President uh, Alex Ekwebe during their tenure, when I was with the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, that was at uh, uh, what do they call this place now? I can't remember the name. Where we had our annual conference sometimes. So, will you be there in the farm and be shaking hands with? And where would you say you have been to that people like us have not been to? God made nonsense of all those high places you did. Honestly speaking, I have eaten all sorts of food in this world that you call, that you treasure. But to me, none is better than our local Panadian and Amari. <laughs> I'm telling you, none is better than the Eferi and the Cashew. Uh, you know, you cook it together to eat your Panadian. I have eaten at any of the top most hotels in in this world, not just in Nigeria, where God has made me to see that all these things they would have treasure, a position of authority, everything is, uh, I mean, such a big, it is nonsense. And if you say you are talking of position, I say to God be the glory. Uh, by God's grace, I'm a chief. So if you say chief, chief is so important, it's nothing. I am a lawyer by profession, so God be the glory. If anybody wants to raise his head and say, hey, is a lawyer. In fact, I don't like being easily addressed as a lawyer because, you know, sometimes you feel as if you are... I like to be as who I am, that the Lord has made me natural, relating with all strata of people. I told people, lawyers don't have any special skill that you don't have. And all they do is... They, they, they act, I mean, they, they, they depend, I mean, they depend upon the precedence, the wisdom of the elders before them. So we need to understand all these things. Then if you talk of the work of God, to God be the glory, I'm a preacher and I'm a teacher. It doesn't make me so important, more important than the, the young boy who is just coming. I'm just, you know, but God has made all those things happen. So that I won't be looking up to say, oh, if only I had been uh, edu so educated, if only I had traveled outside the country, I would have been. I, no, I am nothing but what God has made me. So God humbled everybody. All those titles are meaningless to me. But God is the only thing that matters. God bless you. The message is the ministry of hope that we're into. May God Almighty remove the veils in our hearts and our, our faces so that we can see the glorious things of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless you. We honor your holy name. Thank you for everything that you are revealing to us. I appreciate you that you didn't allow this beautiful time to pass me by. Because if I had been dead before these truths are revealed, I would have missed out. I want to thank you for making me a partaker. And I want to thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning that is listening to these, you know, mysterious messages, deep messages, these truths about the gospel that you brought to this world. Because these are the things that are hidden from us and we remain in confusion. Everybody's groping in the dark. 
when God has said something is gone, we still stick to it, and then we are saying it is, and then everybody is praying and miss everybody is going, you know, astray the more. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you because this time you put a halt to it. You are using everything to speak to us. That man is nothing except whom you made somebody. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray to you. The prayer I'm praying is that everyone that is listening to this message and that will listen to it, please, Lord, remove the veil in their hearts. Remove the veils in their faces so that they can behold your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. So that their lives can be transformed, even for the better. Then we shall all have a hope of making heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and its righteousness. Please, let that be our goal. And yet, without sacrificing what we need to be comfortable in this world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us succeed in this world and let us make heaven. Let us enjoy both. It is possible. If we follow you, let it be so for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for Nigeria. There is hope for Nigeria. Tomorrow, your tomorrow shall be better than today. Nigeria, injustice will depart from you completely. And this land shall be a land flowing with milk and milk and honey. And everybody shall enjoy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we liberate you from the stronghold of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus. And Nigeria, you shall be bring joy to your people. You shall bring happiness. You shall bring everything good. You shall bring salvation. Nigeria will not be a place where they will say there once was Christianity. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. That Christianity shall reign supreme in this country forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed is your name. Lord, I pray for our leaders. Their hearts of stone. Remove that and replace them with heart of flesh. They are there because you are loud. Nobody gets there without you giving it to them. Please, Lord. Don't let, don't let them turn to Nebuchadnezzar or the rich man that says with his wisdom he did it. What you have sent them to do, to do justice to us, let them deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed is your name. I pray, Lord, for the youth in this country. Yes, it's good that we protect when things are going wrong. But things that they have, they ought to do that they have left undone. Or things that they ought not to do, like Yahoo Yahoo, that they have engaged in. Please change their heart. Lord, give them special abilities. Give them things that they will do, a mass, that will bring prosperity to them. The prosperity that they treasure. Father, give them wisdom first, understanding, and let them. If you give somebody special ability, just one idea is enough to transform this nation. Every child, every youth of this nation, give them a special ability. One idea that will transform their lives. Every one of them, nobody should be left out, except those who choose not to receive this gift. Let people begin to invent. Let them begin to you know, produce. Let them begin to have new ideas that will transform the world for the best. Let Father, I pray, don't let these children continue to be wasted by the bullets of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen.